And we're rolling. <clears throat> check, check. All right, thank you guys for tuning in. I'm your host, Hyde, a.k.a. Avery, coming to you deep from some weird place in Ohio. This is a uh, independent podcast. In case you all didn't know, the Pleasant Podcast, we got some dope dudes in the studio today to talk about music, hip-hop, what life is truly like in the realm of being a musician. I will start with the person who's coming to us over the internet. Uh, Wolf, dude, would you like to say a few words? Like, who are you? What music are you into making? And uh, tell us what you're all about uh, real quick. All right. Uh, I'm Wolf XL. I am a producer and a rapper. Uh, uh, certain singing songs out there, I guess. Uh, I'm into any, like, alternative fucking weird shit. And I make music nobody fucking listens to. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you get your start, man? I started making music in sixth grade. I uh, started uh, on some shit producing uh, like fucking app that I got for like 60 bucks for my computer. Uh, and I started making uh, like weird electronic shit. And I wrote poems and then I ghost wrote songs actually too. And then uh, in eighth grade, I started recording and I released a uh, I released a first mixtape in the summer before my freshman year. Can we find that mixtape? Uh, yeah, I think right now it's on SoundCloud. It's Antisocial. Um, it's also on Bandcamp uh, under Wolf XL. And then I also I have a lot better shit out there too. So I mean, it's all out there. I think there's. Some on YouTube too, but yeah, that should be all my shit. Hell yeah, man! How'd you uh, how'd you meet Roach? I think you would know better than I would, honestly. Uh, the first thing I remember about him was he was in an art class with me, and then I don't know, he's like he started fucking talking to me about some shit, and then eventually I sent him a beat that I called Golden Years. And I sent that to him, just like, over email or some shit, because he said he wanted to try to get into rapping. And then he sent it back, and I threw it on a mixtape. All right. Nice, nice. To uh, to my left, now pulling ourselves into uh, sort of a real area here, uh, I got Sebastian. Sebastian, who are you, and what, what do you do? I'm Sebastian. Um, I take pictures. I drum. And I make coffee. That's pretty much it. You take pictures, you drum, and you make coffee. Are there any of those that you favor over the other? Um. Uh, yeah, I'd probably. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, <sighs> coffee's definitely last, but like, I don't know. Music's probably the most like rewarding. Right on. How how long have how long have you been uh, making music? Do you think? Um, since I was like 15, I mean, that's when I got my first drum set and that's when I started, you know, playing and all that. So, yeah. Very cool. Very cool. And to my right, we got Mr. Roach. What, what up? Roach. Yeah, yeah. That's good, my dude. <laughs> Nothing much, man. Yeah. I'm chilling. So what, what are you all about? What, what do you, what do you make? Um, you create? I make, I make rap with, uh, Wolf XL over here. Yeah. We, we got our own like, uh, mini rap group going. Got the the bomb squad. <laughs> so far, it's like just me and him and like a producer that we just met, and he's he's cool as shit. He, shout out to Black Dove. Um, yeah, dude, we just we just make right now. We're just making a, like a random compilation of shit, but like it, we're soon. Like I know I know Wolf has his own like projects going on that are actually pretty like uh, themed, but like I don't have any like s solo stuff coming out yet. Um, I'm working on my first album soon called clef roach and then we got another collab album coming out called goodfellas so that'll be pretty pretty tight that's what that's what we're working on right now hey hey wolf wolf can you hear me yeah how did you guys come up with the name goodfellas for the uh for the mixtape honestly that was all black though um pretty much so far uh me and roach have made two uh, like about to be two collaborative ones the first one was Sewer Trash, and we kind of worked together on that. As far as uh, the next one, Toilet Salad, I took most of the lead because I uh, executive produced that, and then I was on pretty much every track. 
And then after that, when we met Black Dove, he really took the reins of that one. Uh, he came up with the, the concept art that I drew, and then he came up with the title as long as, or as well as like all the sample qualities and stuff. And uh, he sampled a lot of uh, like old Italian shit. Like he did uh, Goodfellas, which uh, you know the mixtape's gonna be named after. Did The Sopranos, and then Godfather, and that was just like a bunch of vocal samples that he threw in there. That's tight. That's tight. Do you guys ever perform with uh, live musicians? No, we we haven't performed yet. We're looking for it. <laughs> you guys have any spots that like you hope you hope to visit while performing, or any like dream venues or anything? Uh, I mean nothing yet. We haven't. We we're not shooting for the stars yet. Um, I mean so far I'm just looking for a DIY to to go fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> I, feel that. I feel that, dude. That's really cool. Um. Do you guys have a specific writing process, you know, like for your songs or for any sort of projects? Like, do you guys sit there and have a preconceived plan that you try to implement before the project takes place? Or do you guys just kind of wing it? Quinn, you want to take the lead on that? Well, I think uh, I'm a little bit of a different story from Roach. I would imagine. I'm not quite sure. Um, like, pretty much every project I've come out with so far and am into so far i mean like i'm a producer first so i'll produce beats and uh whatever i like i'll take um pretty much everything so far i've liked one song that i did and then i pretty much built an album around that until i felt like it was done um so as far like i pretty much start producing and then i'll produce an entire album and then uh i'll just go back and i'll write whatever is natural i guess i'll just sit in front of a computer and i'll type whatever the fuck comes out do you, um, do you play any instruments on the side, or is it uh, all, like, in the box? Uh, I mean, I kind of, I don't really play a lot anymore, but uh, I learned how to play the clarinet as well as uh, the violin, the cello. Um, I'm kind of trying to teach myself piano right now, but, I mean, it's not going great. <laughs> I can get riffs through, but that's about it. Gotcha. Now, uh, if you're like your main programs, do you favorite one program over the other? Like, are you a uh, Pro Tools type of dude, you know, or is like Ableton more your style? Or like uh, a lot of a lot of independent producers love to use, you know, Fruity Loops, something like that. Uh, I got started on some dumbass free shit. So, uh, like GarageBand, I use GarageBand and uh, just a couple plugins that I play uh, that I paid for for uh, my first fucking i think three solo projects including the instrumental ones and uh besides that i use fl studios yeah all right very cool hey seabass uh, what 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 programs do you normally use to record in when taking on projects i mean i don't usually do too much of the recording um but if i ever do have to do anything it's just audacity like i'm not too much or like i'm not too familiar with recording things I'm mean, audacity simple and you can get something pretty decent out of it so that's that's what i i run with mm. i totally feel that and you mr roach <laughs> <laughs> um i started off on ableton uh i had a friend i had a friend that hooked me up with that and um that's how i started fucking around with beats but i never really got like good at it i started getting good and then um my computer, like my whole my whole hard drive went corrupt. I lost a lot of shit, and then I got it back. Got Fruity Loops, hated Fruity Loops, said fuck fuck producing, and now uh, Quinn produces all my shit. But besides that, I used to record vocals with Sony Vegas Pro, and then that got lost in the hard drive too. <laughs> so now I'm using just, yeah, I'm just <laughs> I'm just using Audacity now, and I send all my shit over to my friends to like. <laughs> nice. To mix and master. I do think there's something to be said for Audacity just for its extremely user-friendly interface, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. Turnaround times on projects are a lot easier. For just sure. Just get it, record it, that's it. Yeah. yeah that's sure. it. That's all. And then, of course, there's, like, audio heads that are like, well, you know, it's not quite to 441 hertz, <laughs> gigahertz. <laughs> it would be much better if it was tracked in analog. It's like, well, if, if Sebastian lives in Ohio... And Roach and Wolf are doing some stuff in Pittsburgh. You know, you got to do what you got to do. You got to send the file. Okay. You're like, mm -hmm. nobody right. has the time to sit there with an eight track, hopefully not screw it up, 
you know, and then re-record the eight track and then bounce that. And then still the the whole question of well, how are you gonna actually email a eight track? You have to take <laughs> it to a computer at some point. Bless you, at some point or another. And uh, I totally agree too. Audacity being a open source program that that definitely helps out. Yeah, Me for being sure. In the middle of some interesting i'm on a lot of like avenues right now a uh, musician producer guy manager person um the program that like uh anybody that's listening to this podcast it's actually recorded in reaper it's mm. my first time using reaper i like it it has a lot of similarities to cubase i was very in the cubase and ableton live um i like it very streamlined very refined and I, I just like it a lot. I actually like it more than Pro Tools. And for anybody asking out there, yes, I did pay for the license. Okay. It's not bad. You want things that are as reliable as possible. Don't do something like this. Don't ask me that. <laughs> <laughs> and if anybody's ever curious on um, how this podcast did come about and how we are actually doing this, I will post links in the description of the audio interface, how our guest Wolf is patched in through Skype on this interface and whatnot. Oh, the different mics we're using and and whatever um <clears throat> to the next question how his his life i'll i'll start i'll start with wolf again because i don't you're the person i know the least i'll be honest um has life ever really gotten in the way of your music career and uh how have you pushed past that or tried to cope with that while trying to pursue your music career, financially, socially, metaphysically, <laughs> whatever. Quinn, whatever. I, I hope I hope you tell the story about your parents very quick. <laughs> Fuck you, honestly. All right, uh, so pretty much, honestly, it hasn't been a lot different just because pretty much I think the only thing I've bought so far is a MIDI keyboard for my shit, and then besides that, like all, like honestly, really cheap or pretty much nothing at all. Um, so financially, it hasn't really done anything at all. But uh, I don't know. There are a couple things just like that music changed about my life, just because uh, you know, like my I don't know if you've ever heard anything I put out, but like it's it's pretty uh, like fucking sad and shit. Like if you listen to the lyrics, like I, I'd say I'm more revealing through my music than I am in person. So it was weird for people to come up and ask me like. I'm fucking doing all right, like, because I've never met them before. So, I mean, that was a weird shift just for random fucking people to know me. Um, besides that, uh, fucking Roach over here was saying some stupid shit on song, uh, and my parents thought that was my voice. So in, like, ninth grade or some shit, they told me I, I had to quit music while I was living in their house. And, uh, yeah, that didn't fucking go well. But, uh... I don't know. After I told them that it wasn't me, and they figured out that that was actually him, then uh, I don't know. It got a little bit better, but yeah. I see. Have you ever been one to uh, invest a lot into your music gear, or for you was it mainly uh, all the content that was made with whatever gear you had? Yeah, it was all content. I mean, for my first album, I literally sat down with like a mouse and keyboard and did everything i played the piano on a fucking like computer keyboard like i i did whatever i had to do just because i really love the crowd and i really like the sounds that come out of it and uh yeah it's it's all about the it's all about what comes out of it rather than what i'm putting into it i'm pretty minimalist as far as what i put into it uh, i just try to use whatever i can get my hands on to to really blow out what i can uh, put out I see. I see. What about you, uh, Sebastian? Like, uh, has gear ever played a, a main role with drums, recording, or camera gear? I'll, I'll, I'll just stick to music for now. But uh, for drums, like the recording aspect, you know, any particular drum heads, certain sounds, or do you just make it work? Um, I don't know. I'm really particular with sounds, but I try not to like get too overboard with like buying expensive kits or anything like that. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, just I just work with what I got, really. I mean, it's about being adaptable. I totally feel that. What about you, Mr. Roach? Um, I mean, I started off with getting, like, a Shure SM58 for, like, Christmas from my grandma. And, like, I used that for, like, gaming shit. And then when I got into rapping, 
I, I use that, but it was, I use, I have a blue, I had a blue icicle for it and the blue icicle just made it quiet as hell. So I, I couldn't like really do anything with it, but I still like, you know, I still pushed it out with it. I still sent, sent my verses to Quinn and whatnot. Um, I mean, since then I've upgraded just like a little bit to like a little bit better of a mic and, uh, yeah, so that, that's, that's all I got for my setup. <laughs> Uh, Wolf, have you ever found it difficult or challenging to mix with the microphone selection that Roach has chosen? Like, do you hear obvious differences between, like, that blue microphone versus the SM58? Or if he got his hands, like, on a Sennheiser mic or something like that? I mean, yeah. There's been a couple times where he sent me verses that were either super quiet and when I tried to mix them up, then it was all just feedback shit. Um, but... As of late, I mean, whatever he's using as of right now, I have no clue what it is. But, I mean, his verses are pretty clean, and they come through at a volume where it's easy to mix them. Hmm. I gotcha. I gotcha. Seabass, uh, do you have any questions for these for these fine young rappers? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's thinking. He's thinking. Um, I, I got nothing. I gotta, I gotta think. What are, what are your guys, well, Sebastian's meditating and thinking over here. Um, do you guys have any main influences, uh, stylistically, uh, or like time wise? Like, do you look, do you guys listen primarily to, uh, 90s boom bap? You know what I mean? For example, or like yeah, late 2000s rap. That's my question. Rap, that's like my that. question. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, personally, I, I for sure definitely have uh, an influence. I try to make it, like, myself as much as possible, but, you know, it, it's just hard because, like, you know, like, my favorite rapper ever is Earl Sweatshirt. So, like, people, I've heard people tell me yeah. I sound like him, but, like, I never really, like, you know, I, I, I hold him, like, high up there. So I don't think I, I'm anywhere near his level. But yeah besides that i mean i don't really have any other like musical influences maybe like you know chance the rapper for like one of my songs who said you uh, sound it, like girl? wolf how about you who said you sound like girl dude I've, I've heard at least like six people tell me i sound like girl sweatshirt and i was like i was like eh, not <laughs> I really say you sound like G-Eazy, oh my god no <laughs> that was just that was just that one girl <laughs> G Easy, I I don't think I ever sound like G Easy. Good Wolf, what about you? Um, I don't know as far as influences. Um, I mean I've listened to a lot of different shit. I've I tend to listen to shit like Wu Tang. I mean I've listened to Biggie and Pac here and there. Um, obviously Earl Sweatshirt too. I listen to a lot of uh, Flying Lotus. I uh, fucking Captain Murphy. Um. I, I like people that pay a lot of attention to production. So anyone like that, I guess, would be kind of an influence. But I don't know. I'm not really looking at one person. That's pretty solid. That was a pretty right solid on. answer. I right know. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> I, I am an avid fan of uh, everything Flying Lotus has made. My goodness. And like when I found out that he was Captain Murphy, my mind was blown. Like, oh, yeah, the dude. wall. Like, I was like, what the fuck? Because, dude, I thought I had my money on, like, uh, Tyler. Straight up. With that, with that oh, pitch yeah, down yeah. voice, dude. I thought that was Tyler, Tyler the Creator, Tyler. bro. Yeah. Um, like, that shit blew my mind, honestly. Because, uh, fucking You're Dead was a great ass album. And then, fucking Duality, too. Like, that dude's my god now. I just can't keep up to it. Right. Do either of you guys listen to uh, MF Doom? Oh, I fuck, I fuck with MF Doom, dude. Okay, yeah, good. good. <laughs> yeah, I was say, like, if you listen to Earl Sweatshirt, dude. like I feel like you, like, still kind of listen to MF Doom because he like heavily, like, is influenced by him. Yeah, I know that. I mean, Earl Sweatshirt's just like the first person that comes to mind just because he's like been my favorite rapper for years. But like, yeah, of course, like MF Doom, MF uh, fucking, oh, what's that one album? It looks like a comic book. It might be called MF Doom. Oh, you like Operation Doom? Doom. Uh, yeah, Operation, Operation Doom. Yeah, yeah, dude, I fuck so, with that album hard. Yeah. But like, besides that, I'm not. I'm definitely not like a. 
I guess connoisseur of of MF Doom though. Should like, check out Victor Vaughn. I fuck got some sick production. Yo, Mad Villain is number one. I'll say that. But here's oh, yeah, what I'll no say doubt. about uh, MF Doom. No I'll doubt. say uh, MF Doom inspired a generation of artists like Earl Fletcher, who's coming out with all these like alternative hip hop type shit and like a lot of focus on uh, lyrical prowess and shit like that. And I think uh, the artists that he inspired, like uh, Earl and Tyler and all of them, I think they're inspiring people now. So, I mean, at the very least, MF Doom is the granddad of all of this, like, alternative shit that's coming out right now. For sure. Respect. <laughs> I feel that, bro. Like, uh, what, do, what do you guys think of this, uh, this whole drug craze in the, in the rap community? You got a fool named Lil Xan. What the hell fuck, is that? Fuck Lil Xan. Who is Lil Xan? <laughs> what is a, what is a Lil Xan is the worst rapper. What does he do? <laughs> Fucking bitch ass boy. And how is he making more money than us? I don't get it. I don't, I don't get understand. It. You know, like... Uh, it's because he got put on by Lyrical Lemonade. That's why. Lyrical Lemonade. What is Lyrical Lemonade? Dude, fucking amazing... Amazing... Uh, what was he? Director? They're, they're direct, it's a director kind of thing? What, 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 what would you classify that as? producer producer no video he's, producer yeah video producer for sure um i think he's amazing i feel like a lot like probably nine out of ten songs that he puts out like instantly blows up and like becomes mainstream instantly like billboard top 100 but like i mean not all his uh, not all the music out there that he's like putting out is like something that like i would personally listen to but i definitely fucked with like little skies when he put them out young bands shit like that trippy red but uh yeah how about how about you how about you wolf i mean i think all this all these motherfuckers that are blowing up right now um honestly i don't think it has anything to do with talent uh i think honestly the music industry right now is about who you know rather than what you're putting out so these people in the city that have connections to people that can get their shit out or can support their shit they're always going to like be better off than anyone that coming from a smaller city or a town or anything like that because the connections aren't there besides that i mean there's a lot of trends that people are chasing pretty hard right now so i think people are just looking for the trap sound rather than like quality or anybody pushing ideas or anything and i'm not saying like any of us out here are that but um i mean i i would say we're not actively trying to pursue that uh like lil van or you know that type shit that's uh just like basic trap shit so i don't know i think a lot of people are and it doesn't work out for everyone but uh the people that it does work out for it's because they have connections i totally dude i agree with you 110 percent, bro like and that's almost to be said with like any industry it's like the, the longer i do this dude the longer it's just the biggest realization i've said it time and time again to uh, a bunch of my dudes that like to make music it's like yo if you're really trying to make it my dude like like you said, it's not necessarily what you or uh, what you know. It's who you know, and dudes that can exactly. do it. You know, um, right. that sentence sounded really stupid, but um, yeah, it's no, uh, it's absolutely correct. It's like music. And I think that the fucked up part is that like uh, these young motherfuckers out here that are like you know fucking sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, that age range, <clears> like. Those motherfuckers are seeing people pop up on SoundCloud like that, and they, they're seeing them blow up, and they, they're saying, like, oh, they just threw some shit on SoundCloud, and then that fucking blew up. But, like, it's bad because, like, that shit happens to one person, and then behind the scenes there's 2,000 people that are, like, sinking away all the fucking money they're making and going into debt and shit just so they can try to chase that same thing, but that shit doesn't happen to everyone. Right, right. I tried to break it down to a few people, dude. It's like it's not music business; it's just business. It was something as uh, right. lucrative as music. I'm not even gonna lie; it's just straight marketing at that point. For sure, you absolutely. Are, yeah. You are a product. You have to move a product. You have to sell yourself. Yeah. yeah, and then you can't. You gotta like make a mental note of like, do you actually want to do this for yourself and run the risk of not making the money that you'd like to make? Or just be okay with being broke and loving what you do? Or do you want to be that percentage where it's like, okay, screw it, I'm going to sell out and just do what these people tell me to do? You know? Yeah, right, I absolutely. want to do that. <laughs> I'm sick of working. <laughs> <laughs> we got Crunk AI over here cracking jokes. If you guys want to see his photos, 
His uh, nice photography links, by the way, will also be in the in the description as well. But yeah, it seems like uh, music. It, ironically enough, me just even putting in that plug. Everything entertainment wise, dudes, is like straight uh, mm -hmm. mark uh, marketing. And then it's uh, it's more of a battle of which marketing crew do you want to be a part of that seems to be the most real. So like, does anybody here listen to? Uh, there's an artist named Father. Oh fuck, dude. I love Father. Yeah. Dude. Right, right, right. So you guys know Awful Records. Yeah, dude. Like his little he's motherfucking label Look. in his trap house. You know, <laughs> hey, dude, I love that. I, the man's a fucking genius. The, the weird part is like nobody knows that's where like Cardi came from. Playboy Cardi, I know. like, <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, I was like, I was like, no, Cardi came out of that, dude. Like, yeah, and nobody, know nobody, doing. nobody knows that shit. But yeah. dude, father, father, yeah, dude, I've been fucking with father since like as soon as wrist came out, R wrist, and then I listened to that whole album, fucking, uh, why can't or what is it? Why can't I cry money? Yeah, I think that was dude. Good. I fucked with that song hard, and then, uh, uh, what was that second album that came out? I forget album names, man. He got some new shit coming out. It sounds kind of, it sounds kind of fire. Yeah, dude, it does sound tight. Like I was reading a lot into um, how he got to where he was. Um, he's actually way smarter than he leads on, mm -hmm, which for is sure. a brilliant idea because it's like you're pl you're playing into the gullibility of your fan base. I think that's a pretty clever idea. Um, and that dude went to art school for like two or three years in really? some business classes before he dropped out. I didn't know I was that like, one. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, <laughs> he is way more intelligent than he lead than he you know seems to be. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, I think that yeah. I think that's really frequent. Honestly, like if you look at someone like Lil Pump, like I think his music is fucking trash. However, I mean he put out one song that everybody went fucking crazy over. He's copy and pasting the same shit over and over. And then he's getting fucking hit every single time. Like these these motherfuckers out here, like six nine, he was talking about the shit that he put out is fucking garbage. Like it doesn't make any sense. And he's right, but everybody eats that shit up. These people that everyone thinks they're dumb, they know what the fuck they're doing. Yeah, so it, technically it's not even the artist that's dumb. It's just it's us. the listeners. Yeah, we're all yeah. dumb. Feeding the zombies, yeah, my absolutely. dude. Oh, America, think, America's just going down, man. <laughs> I think we just discovered something here. <laughs> we have to be a more educated audience. It's just, or, it's yeah. not even like the audience. I mean, like it is about the audience. The audience, uh, it's mostly because the audience is like fourteen-year-olds now that play Fortnite. Honestly, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're, well, I think I think more than anything, it comes down to people. People want what the fuck they want, and it doesn't really matter. If, like, if the masses want garbage, then whatever. If they just want to fucking dance then it's whatever it is that's what they want but i mean to them if they're outwardly saying that they're not like fucking with the shit that they're putting out then that that's telling me that they understand the business rather than the music and like if they ever choose to change lanes then they could be making some shit they like but i i think it's important to understand how the fuck to win before you just uh start deluding yourself into thinking that you're going to be the next one to blow up Right, right, right. And e even in a twist, sick and twisted way, uh, I think, like, the whole Odd Future click worked that whole system brilliantly. Mm -hmm. You know, like, Tyler knew, like, shock and awe always works. It's the same shit that, like, when the big heavy hair band, like, heavy metal bands were doing, like, in the 80s, you know? Just this big shock right. and awe. Or, like, when Ozzy was eating a bat on stage, you know? We all remember that Earl yeah. video. It was like, oh, 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 oh. You know, he's like, I'm a hot and bothered astronaut crashing while jacking off the, you know, <laughs> buffer room vids. Yeah, and it's all that fucked apple. up imagery of people, like, spitting out teeth and shit like that. But, yeah, I mean, people didn't know if that was real or fake at the time. And exactly. then he would come out with some, like, weird twisted shit, like the Goblin video. And, like, people were attracted Yonkers. to that shit because it was so fucked up. And they absolutely know how to play the system as well. Yeah, you're right. It's uh, It's very interesting how that works it's like you gotta you gotta do something flashy for like the first maybe like half a year to a year to catch everybody's attention and then of course we, we right. see we see sid the kids dropping beautiful jazz you know we all know frank ocean's mm -hmm. a beast you know it's like even if the whole crew split up we all know that they know what what exactly what's going on mm -hmm. um now i'm not too versed in uh, this next topic I'm, i figured you guys were i just saw it on my instagram feed what the hell is going on with mgk and eminem right oh, now? dude fuck that somebody break it down to me okay i'm blind I literally like three seconds ago just saw a link on my uh, facebook yeah, feed about I, that i have I, no idea what's going I got, on i got sent uh, for this is all i know i don't know shit We're about too it lame to be in the loop. but i got sent a google notification about that that from google news that said like 
Eminem or MGK dropped a song called Rap Devil <laughs> about yeah, it Eminem. sounded corny, but I mean, hey, he's from Cleveland. We it, gotta be like, hey, MGK. Eh, fuck that. <laughs> um, honestly, like, did you hear about Eminem's new album? How dude, it just I, like, I don't know anything. dude, Eminem just dropped an album out of nowhere, dissing like every rapper that's out right now. I guess even including Earl Kendrick, I, including Earl Sweatshirt. Uh oh, Earl Sweatshirt. No, probably not like, including Earl Sweatshirt. It was including Tyler the Creator. Oh, was it? I heard. I heard Earl. Yeah. I I'm just going off of what people have told me. I heard Earl said right, some shit about here's it. Here's what happened. Here's what happened. So pretty much what happened is like a year ago or whatever, Eminem dropped Revival, which was supposed to be like the third in the series of uh, Relapse, Recovery, and then Revival to end it all. Um, pretty much when he dropped that, it was super horrible quality. He was trying some shit out and he was trying to sound young again or he was doing whatever. It was fucking bad. People called him out on his shit like Tyler, the creator, over Twitter and uh, like NGK, I assume, and all these people came out and they were saying, like, yo, like, this is a dip in quality for sure. And no matter how they said that, Eminem got pissed off because he can't take any fucking criticism at all, apparently. But he dropped this uh, fucking Kamikaze album. He's coming at people. He, he, he said uh, the, the line he referred to Tyler in was, uh, he's like, I see why you call yourself a faggot. You're not creating shit or something like that. So he's getting a lot of shit for that. And then <laughs> after that, he brought up Earl's name. He said, you know, go find your friend Earl, the hooded hoodie or whatever the fuck. And uh, I don't know. It was some weird fucked up language to refer to Earl. He, he was saying that he was a better lyricist, but he was saying that Tyler hadn't, like, created shit and he can't talk shit until he's better or something. However, I mean, it's like, I assume you've listened to Flower Boy or Wolf or anything. Yeah. Like, higher quality that he's been putting out like ever since yep. probably 2010 Eminem has been in constant decline I mean he doesn't really put out anything that isn't pop rap so I mean he's just popping off at all these motherfuckers that are actually catching attention and that's all that shit is right now I think MGK he just went at a couple times because uh, MGK apparently had made some comments about how his daughter was hot or some shit like that so in uh in some fucking song he was talking about, like, you know, just stay the fuck away from me or whatever. So that's what that shit was, was about. But, I mean, besides that, he's just popping shots off because people said his album was bad. Now, that is interesting, too, because back in the 90s, as we can almost recall, even though none of us were alive, really, um, rap beef. Rap beef what used to be very real. And then uh, towards the early 2000s, it was more of a publicity stunt to boost albums. I think Kanye was doing a beef thing. Or something a little while Kanye ago. Kanye always does a beef thing. Oh, yeah. No, I think Kanye's was like Pusha T. Are you talking about the Pusha T Kanye thing? I don't even know what I'm I heard something about. about Pusha T and Kanye and fucking, like, I think Kanye, like, put that shit down immediately. I think Kanye was like, dude, I, I'm not beefing with Pusha T just because, like, oh, that's what it was. Bro, I, I think it was a Meek Mill. Was it a Meek Mill? Oh, it was, a, there, it was a Meek Mill versus Drake, and now it's Pusha T versus Drake. Uh, Pusha T wanted Kanye on his side. Kanye said, fuck that. I'm not doing that. So it's still just Pusha T and Drake. Interesting. And then I mean, I would say as far as everything goes, it's all a publicity stunt. But I mean, sure. the way it started right. out was obviously West Coast, East Coast. And then I want to say, I, I could be very wrong, but I'm pretty sure the first people to pull some like publicity type beef out was actually Jay and then Nas. And they were kind of going at it like here and there for a while subliminally. And then nothing really came of that. But, I mean, I would say as far as everything toxic in rap, as always goes, Drake started the toxic shit. So, I think, I mean, I'm pretty sure he started all the shit where it's just stupid fucking beef every other day with somebody else, and then it gets resolved over Snapchat or some stupid shit like that. I, it resolved over Snapchat? <laughs> <laughs> wow. 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 Fuck Drake. My point. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, uh, speaking of production, like, the, uh, it, it was, it was painful, but interesting to see when Drake dropped that, uh, what's the song I'm thinking of? Sounds like the Wii theme music, and there's a colorful ass background, and he's dancing. Oh, like Hotline Bling. Or, uh, yeah, Hotline Bling, right. 
same sort of thing. It's like Jesus Christ, Avery. Yeah, thank you, man. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like one song with that dun, one dun, guy dun, doing dun, that one thing. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, yeah. He was like, dude, you got all, all this budget, and uh, we're just gonna light up my warehouse with some lights. That's all. That's it. Is that really it? But then apparently when I, I mean, looked into like, it, honestly, it doesn't even matter what the fuck he does now, right? Though I mean, like everybody is dri- is just riding Drake's dick so fucking hard, like. Yeah, I mean, he he could sit and fucking just get bukkake on, and everyone would lose their shit about it. And be like, <laughs> oh my god, he's so deep. I mean, he's got everyone in his fucking pocket. That's true. I guess Degrassi did pay off. <laughs> in a way. Degrassi. Uh, good show. As far as production goes, uh, I will say Drake has some fucking dope producers on his squad from here from here and there. I mean, some of the shit that he puts out is just good for the beat. He's a fucking terrible artist, and he's everything that's wrong with the industry, but still, the flame has beats. Hells yeah. Give me one second. Sending an important text message. Really quickly, gonna, I can't I mean, Um, what was I gonna ask you guys? Oh yeah, uh, <clears throat> Wolf, where are you? Where are you from? Uh, I was born in Colorado. Uh, I lived in Grand Rapids most of my life. Now I'm over in Detroit area. Detroit, Michigan. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Inter- you know who else is uh, from the Detroit area? Eminem. Oh, I was gonna say Danny Brown, but, uh, <laughs> 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 but yeah, yeah, Eminem. I heard he's getting, he's like in a new movie coming up. Wait, which one? I who? fucking forget. Oh, it's like something. Who, no, who is it? Uh, like White Boy Rick or something. We're talking about Eminem, I'm assuming. No, Danny Brown. Danny Brown. Yeah. What? Yeah. I, I don't even oh. know who Danny Brown is. What? What did he do? The Adderall Admiral. Yeah, I don't know who that is. What? Atrocity Exhibition? My He's dude. actually one of the dudes that's still pumping out some decent shit. I'm not going to lie. And as far as I've researched, Danny Brown's like got his head on straight. Like The dude donated to two or three skate parks and is trying to like give back to his community. Who, who, like who, straight up. Who is he, though? Like, what did he do? Yeah, I mean, as far as, as, far as I've seen thus far, like, he's, a, he's, a, he's a dope dude. He, he, made he has a... On, the, on his uh, newest album, he has a song called Really Doe. That has Earl Sweatshirt on it. I, I haven't heard that. It's, dude, it's a uh, Is it? Should I, should I look into Danny Brown? Like, Dan, Danny Brown's <laughs> a, like, a wild dude. It's kind of like party music. Is he British? Then, some of it, what's that? Is he British? No. No? No, no that motherfucker's from he, Detroit. Oh. His teeth. Okay. I heard, he's from Detroit. I heard. I think I heard a Danny yeah, Brown. That was Danny British. Brown British? No, I heard I heard a Danny Brown once, and he had he Dumb was like British. Fuck. That was all. So wrote. Danny something. <laughs> fuck, fuck you, fuck you guys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't know this this dude. Like, no, I'll play the song after this because you need to hear it. Or, or we might we, we should probably play a Danny Brown cut. Maybe going into the next segment. Maybe. Shall we? If you guys are down. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you guys are just now tuning in, by the way, you are listening to the Pleasant Podcast. We got some dope independent artists here in the studio. We got MC Roach. We got MC Wolf Roach. hanging out with us here uh, over Skype in the interwebs, the dark Ew. webs. Uh, we got Seabass over here hanging. What's up? I'm in a uh, undisclosed area. <laughs> a here hotel in, uh, room. Somewhere in Ohio. Sh- <laughs> somewhere in Ohio. <laughs> they don't know a hotel. <laughs> you know what's weird? All of these podcasts go down in the most messed up places. It's you, never you did one at Lakeland, didn't you? No, no. I, I thought you, I I swear <laughs> I swear to God I it's, swear to God I saw you you and some uh, some we, we might have been shooting a video for a class. No, it was definitely like, it was definitely like a podcast. You guys you guys like said it was a video. It was definitely a video type of podcast. You guys were like talking about different kind like types of music. That must have been when I was with Captain. Yeah, with the Lost Trey. Boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it was forever ago. It was like sophomore. Well, your junior or no 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 no. We you you just graduated. You, d- you had just. <laughs> nah, I, don't know. I, I have know. no age. He's like, fi- he's like 50 years nah, old. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> I have no age. I show no age. Yes. Um, anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, for you, Wolf, my dude. Wait, weren't we going to do a break? Were, were uh, we going to do the Danny Brown? I mean, we're, keep we're, it going? we're almost at the. Uh, hour mark? Yeah, we're almost at the hour mark. I'll for play. I'll, yeah, we're no. at like 39 minutes. Damn. We could probably push through it. 
Cool. Yeah, and then towards the end of that, we'll we'll exit with some Danny Brown. So if you, you want to queue up, you want to queue up some uh, really dope by Danny Brown. That'd be tight. Yeah. Play us out. Uh, do you have your little adapter for your iPhone? No. Nah. Oh damn! I could I could queue up. Uh, without without hanging up. On yeah, for sure. Oh okay. All right. All right. Okay. We got technology on our side. <laughs> got Spotify. Yeah, that's what I got. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. Mm-hmm. All right. Since uh, since Wolf is still on the line. All right, my dude. Um, what I was gonna ask you. Out in that Detroit area, do people still host raves? Yeah, I've seen a lot of raves. Um, there's there's pretty much rave venues every uh, every I don't know a couple miles or so. I mean, there's there's always places to do shit over here, and especially near a college campus. Like there's a there's a bunch of like fucking clubs and shit, and then there's just shit going down at people's houses. And stuff. Really? Do you, do you guys have a dope DIY spot you want to hit up? If you guys, you know, do a show down there. Do you? Uh, I don't know of any. No, I just came yeah. over here. Oh, okay. I feel it. I yeah, feel because it. he j- he just went to college there. He he's been in Grand Rapids for most of that time. Oh, I feel it. I feel it. Um, well, whenever you guys are down to travel a little bit, I got a few spots. Do you really? I got a few. Not not out in Detroit. Not not out in Detroit yet. Oh. I got a I got a bulletproof the van first, man. I, True. I'm not <laughs> going to go out to Detroit <laughs> like that. <laughs> Put some phone books in the in the door, dude. Um, but anyway, like if you guys are trying to do shows out here in, uh, in Ohio, from Ohio to Cincy, little in Kentucky, maybe even Indiana, I know some, some interesting places. Yeah. That'd be dope as shit. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. We just need to get uh wolf down here so that we can get, so that we can get the whole crew popping there. Right, right, right. Wolf, do you have any, uh, do you have any photography? Uh, see bass if he's up to it. I don't know. He seems very, uh, preoccupied right now. Might be able to hook you guys up with some, with some photos perhaps. I'm not sure. Yeah, man, just hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm, I'm re- like, I'm re- I really want to start working with like artists more. I have a couple ideas I want to try. I mean, I can't guarantee it's something I'll like go full fledged on. But I mean, if you guys want to shoot, do a little photo shoot. I mean, like, I mean, like, since he won't be able to get down here for a while, I mean, I'll do a photo shoot with you just because I need, I need some like shit to post up on Insta, me- Insta media. <laughs> All the Insta media, yeah. <laughs> the Insta web, yeah. Uh, but yeah, cause like, I don't got shit. Like my, my, my social media skills are lacking. Like I know how to, I know like how to make it look good and how to make it look like, you know, like something that'll pop, but like, I, I just don't have any of the like content to post. Oh yeah. I know how to make things look trendy. Hell yeah. Well, we, 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 I'll hit you, you up soon for film, that. So, I mean, that's half of it right there. Yeah. See, yeah. can you elaborate on your photo skills, man? Like for those of us that don't know what film is, cause I'm sure there's someone that's going to listen to this. It's like, Oh, you see that film? Oh, is that, is that a puzzle boy? What's the film? Oh, I have cellophane. I have, pl- I have tape. Is that the film? <laughs> is that what the film is? Do you shoot in eight millimeter? Like, say, can you educate these fools for him? Oh, let, let them know. I'm the worst person to do this. I don't know. know like, is. I I I don't know the name of my camera. <laughs> <laughs> I just take pictures. That's all I like to do. I don't care about equipment. Um, but I don't I don't know. I don't know what to talk about it with it. Uh, well, who are some artists you that you've worked with um, in the past for photography or anybody? I guess. Well, you for sure. Like I've, t- I've I mean, I like started taking pictures of you. I bet that uh, did happen. Fuck, I can't even remember that far back. I'm not even really like shooting artists right now. It's more just like street photography stuff and all that. Do you do you have a nice camera? Yeah. You do? Okay. Yeah, yeah it's a point and shoot, but I mean like Wait, what, what's a, what's what's a point and shoot? Like all you just do is just Oh, you like look through the, the lens and that's click it. it. Yeah, that's what, that's what really I have. Like setting exposure or anything. It, does it all for you yeah my my i have a nice camera i bought it just like thinking i'd take pictures with it but like yeah. i never got around to it i'm just too busy to do shit like that no i know it takes a it takes a lot of investment to like <clears throat> i don't know really learn how to get a good product but i mean i'm just taking pictures and i send them up to like different labs and they have them developed i mean i'm working on making my own dark room but that'd be dope yeah that'd be sick if, yeah if you if you move in i got a dark room area for you that's all I'm looking for. <laughs> I will eat, sleep, and poop, and then. How, how big does a does a dark room have to be? Not that big. Really, like, like bro, probably a lot the of size of the bathroom. bathroom in this place. Right Honestly, now. I think I might actually have some like room for that. Yeah, that'll be perfect. That'll Hell be yeah. awesome. Sick. <laughs> I'll just need the bathroom for like 
four hours. It's not even a bathroom. It's like a whole. It's like a like a big closet area. It it has a lot of room. That's fine. That'd be awesome for sure. Sweet, (laughs) sweet. What uh, what we'd like to really stress here at Pleasant Valley Media is that none of this works without actively acting as friends and as a team. Because if we don't work together, none of this happens. Because it's like we, even though we all just kind of talk trash on like Drake and Eminem or whatever they're going through with, even at lower levels like the Odd Future Click, you know, Awful Records and whatnot, um, they still work together. That was the whole thing. Like when I, uh, you can look at any sort of noisy interview, the the website Noisy. You can check out their interviews with Father from Awful Records. What that dude did straight up, he got a house. All of his friends were living in living in it like a group house, and they just sit there and just grind out songs. No furniture, just very very fast internet, a microwave, and a refrigerator, and that was their studio slash like beat lab or whatever you want to call it. And Brockhampton too. Don't forget Brockhampton. Yeah, 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 yeah. Brockham- Brockhampton's yeah, no, the Brockham- new Brockham- the new the newer one that came out and did did all that. Yeah, dude. <clears throat> it's not about the gear i want to stress that a lot on this podcast it's not about the gear it's about like the product and how much time how much you're dedicated into doing what you love to do. yeah yeah for sure yeah. i can definitely come out with oh, like yeah. I've, I've heard my shit like kind of sounds like actual studio like like my girlfriend like when i first started talking to her she was like wait you made this like in your room and i was like i was like yeah what do you mean she was like wow i like i would have never guessed that just because right. like you can, you can get shit done with like the most like uh, uh fucking hand me down shit you can find out yeah. on the street. Yeah, I I discovered that too, dude. Like I started showing people my projects without telling them what I was using, because I got so tired of that. The professors at school used to like judge me over that. They're like, oh, <laughs> you should not have used a rock band microphone. <laughs> really? Them, did you I'll, did I'll you use them. a rock band yeah, microphone, yeah, that dude? That's and then, nuts. And then I'll show them another song, right? <laughs> Same exact setup, but I was like, oh, yeah, I was in Lakeland for about eight hours yesterday. They're like, oh, yeah, sounds real nice. Really? I'm like, wow, you're full of shit. Who? who would... I'm not I'm not going to say on this report. Oh, yeah, line, yeah, yeah, yeah. But we'll, it, was, we'll it, was, it was garbage, dude. Do it. it. Was I, I won't do it. <laughs> I won't do it for the vibe. Call, call them out. R.I.P. Rap vine. beef. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, next thing we know, we got professors dropping mixtapes. Mm-hmm. Ain't yeah. that me. Hey, is, is my levels good on there? Yeah, you're cool, bro. All right, say cool. Something. Say something. What, uh, yeah, that's you right there. Which one am I? Okay. Yeah, I'm looking at I'm looking at the um Wolf? No, no, the uh shoot, I forget what it's called. Whatever. Oh, no. Master Volume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no. there's a limiter on it. Whatever. Believe it or not. Even if it's peaking, I got a limiter in the audio interface program. Oh, cool. Uh Wolf, speaking of gear, to suck up some more time here, dude. Uh what what gear are you using, my guy? Uh right now I just got some fucking basic ass microphone that I think I got for twenty dollars. And then along with that, I got a cover for it that I got for three bucks. Um, I have a fucking audio box to just run the mic into my PC through USB. Well, what kind of audio box do you have? Uh, I don't know, maybe thirty, forty dollars. Um, then I have a MIDI keyboard that I think costs like eighty bucks. But I mean, that's pretty much it. All the programs that I like every every program that I use, I pretty much got just like from a friend or something to use uh or you know obviously graduate in the street and then i think i paid like five bucks for plugins so i think all together i paid 150 dollars top probably over the last four years not bad at all no not bad <laughs> that is way less than what i threw down I, and you probably made way more than i have Jeez. um what else was I? What else was I gonna mention? Oh yeah, um, who's making your guys' uh, album art? That is all That's Wolf. That's all me. That's what's up. Yeah, well, also, also a dog at that. He he's made everything. Like, uh, I don't think you can see it right now. Oh yeah, you can't see my lock screen, mm-hmm. but um. Yeah, dude, that, that that's pretty tight. tight. It's a fucking uh, like cleft roach baby. Because I don't know if you noticed, I have a cleft lip. Really? Like. Oh, a little bit. Yeah. yeah, it's it's so mild you can't tell, but like you know, like we we we've just like bass boosted the shit out of it, so that it looks like it looks like I'm like the biggest like cleft kid in the world. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then and then and then like we have like uh, face stickers that he just you know he tra- he like just traced over like pictures of us to make these stickers, and they look dope as shit. Mm-hmm. Um, we wanted to do stickers with those. We I have a shirt that like no one else bought but me. 
<laughs> that thing <laughs> that thing's pretty tight um and then like for all our, our album art like we have every single album art has those faces on it just because you know like why not um what's the word for it like when you like make something like iconic to you i i can't, I can't figure out that you word. wanted to have continuity between projects or um what do you mean i mean like so like tyler the creator did like the cat face what what, oh, what would that yeah. be branding branding yeah like yeah. Did we just to brand ourselves we did shit like that so now we have our brand like our brand out there and now right. we're just working on trying to like get it out <laughs> wolf would you ever be willing to work with um instrumental samples from real songs or even just short clips from live bands yeah of course i mean i'm always looking for anybody who's playing uh you know live instruments at all to try to work with uh I try to work with one of my buddies to take out all the synthetic bass in all of my songs and just replace it with the played bass that he did. Um, so that's still kind of in the works. I got to finalize that. Uh, besides that, I'm looking for any kind of uh, like live singers, live players, live uh, any any kind of instruments, just because I feel like there's a lot more soul in that. So I, I don't know. I fuck with those sounds a lot. I feel that. I feel that. If. Uh... If Sebastian and myself ever have free time, we might be able to throw you guys some stems or something like that. For sure. For sure. Yeah, that shit would be dope. That would be tight. Super duper tight. Uh, what was what was the other thing I was going to ask you? Oh, what type of computer do you have? Um, I've got a Mac Mini, and then I've got a ThinkPad P51 or some shit like that. I see. Uh, do you guys plan on putting your stuff uh, on a physical vinyl? I know a lot of dudes, bands, uh, bands, and just rappers now are going a little, a little more towards vinyl. How, what, how do you guys feel about it? I, I don't. I don't think we're at a level to even think about vinyl yet. Like, oh, yeah. I mean, we we think maybe maybe about CDs, but even CDs, like, who are we gonna give those CDs to right now? They, we don't have we don't have a following yet. Like, I feel we it. we pull some plays we pull some plays out of, out our ass, but like honestly, I have no idea where those come from. <laughs> I don't know, Quinn. Do you know where those come from? Uh, I mean, I've, I've checked a couple people that are like following my music and just like see where it comes <laughs> from. Uh, the last dude that's been checking out most of my stuff is in fucking like Phoenix, Arizona. So I mean, it's just a bunch of shit like that. Damn. Uh, I don't I don't know I don't know why Google Analytics goes a long way. <laughs> a very long way. Uh Wolf, do you skate? Uh yeah, I try to do for every once in a while. Obviously, like right now I'm stuffed into a dorm so I don't have a lot of room to, but uh yeah, I love it. Do you ride mini ramp at all? What was that? Do you ride mini ramp like half pipe stuff at all? Uh, I've done a couple stupid shit like that where I've done one on like a rip stick, but no, nah, I don't have a lot of that stuff near me. Oh, I got you. I got yeah, you. Michigan was kind of weak for that. Really? Yeah, dude. There, like, there's like a skate park every city here. Like, there's like a skate park every like forty minutes there. Damn, <laughs> it's crazy. That I, a lot of people longboard there. Longboarding is a lot more popular than skateboarding from what I've seen. Are there there's a lot of hills over there? <sighs> it's decent there you can definitely find some spots mm -hmm. but like then there's also you know a lot of flat i got you you, you just got to find it interesting interesting sea bass for our last five just about five minutes you got a question for these guys fuck dude <laughs> <laughs> i don't know like i don't know i don't know i don't know either mm. eh. I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm, I just think um, I'm unprepared. I mean, what else can we tell you? Uh, Where do you guys hope to see yourself in the next three years? I won't say three to five, but three years. Three years? Um, Personally, like, you know, I'm not shooting my hopes high for this, but, like, I'll probably still be in college and, like, working. Um, I had a psychic tell me that I was going to move states in four years or three years. So let's see where that that's going to happen. Up. It's going down. I, I hope so. Because, like, dude, that psychic's been pretty spot on from what I've seen so far. Like, uh, like uh, my girlfriend went to it with me, and 
that lady told her like by mid August, she'll get some big call. And like now she's, she got a big call in mid August and like, she's going to get like salary 40, 40, like 40,000 a year at at the age of 19. Like that's dope dude. So like if this, if this works out, like I hope I'll like, I want to go to like Georgia. Georgia sounds sick as sick as fuck. Georgia. But uh, yeah, besides that musically, like I I have no idea where that's going to go, man. I'm trying right now. I'd say I'd say I'm gonna give myself another year. If I can't do something out like w- something with it, then I'd say it's it's a lost cause. I see. What about you, Wolf? Uh, I would say for me, I'm still looking to be in college for three years. But as far as music goes, uh, I'm just doing this shit for me right now, huh? So I'll probably keep making this shit just because I love it. Um, I'm not exactly sure how far it'll get me but you know i'll be making it for sure all right determination see best where do you see yourself in three years my dude um three easy i would honestly like to be doing some kind of like touring thing at least kind of getting out of ohio for a little while um i don't know yeah just still writing music and coffee Stuff like that. I don't know. I'm not a really. I'm not too unhappy with my life. Like, I found ways to be happy with it. So, doesn't mean I'm getting comfortable. Like, I just. I mean, of course. Like, I would like to branch off into other things, but yeah. I feel. I feel that. Pretty Perfecting easy. craft. What do you see yourself in three years? Not yeah. living out of a hotel room. Not living out of a hotel room. <laughs> I mean, that's that's temporary <laughs> though. The most literal way imaginable. I mean, at least that's temporary. Like, like there there's people on the streets right now. True. <laughs> hotel room is fine without like easily two or three grand worth of recording equipment <laughs> you know hotel yeah, honestly like, you could probably sell all your recording like, equipment and like be fine for like a couple months yeah, in a house no. <laughs> <laughs> no. i know that's how it was in cincy i was like uh, nope nope Mm-mm. nope can't do nope. it this is worth more than the van minor detail no i see myself like doing more of what i'd like to do than what i have to do so to speak like at the bare minimum, having my own house with a mini ramp. Okay. Is is this the first episode of the podcast? Not of this podcast. This, there's like 19, <clears throat> almost 20. No, there, there's 20 out already? Yeah. Yeah. Like, this is like a comp of like over the past year and a half. Oh, okay. I just okay. now have the time to actually, like, everything. yeah, and get everything right. together. Gotcha. Right. It's like, if you were to go through the archives, there's seriously stuff here from 2014. <laughs> that's, that's funny. Yeah. So you guys will get an idea, even auto quality drive. Audio, audio quality wise, how how much things have improved, but yeah. Was Bika like four years ago? Dude, yeah. What the fuck? Yeah, I from fourteen all the way to twenty sixteen. Yeah, I Jesus think fourteen was Christ. when I met you too. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, I feel old. You are old. What yeah, like fuck? fifty years I feel old. Like I did that like last year. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so that's why it's like yeah I. Uh, Definitely want to work on getting more of my personal crap together. At least have one house because I want to have like some rental property, but at least one house and a mini ramp. Oh, if I could add to my goals too, like more like more like dipping my toes in to photography more. Like I really mm-hmm. am like trying to. <sighs> I'm trying to like get together a team to like bring back film, I guess, um, in a way that like. We can shoot like artists and stuff like that, like film wise, and then after the shoot, like go home, develop all the film, and then just like have pictures out like next day, and just keep like a constant flow with that. Like that's like, that's a huge goal right now. Have a posse of dedicated, legit, yeah, photographers. Yeah, that and maybe a coffee shop, maybe. Oh, that'd be tight. Yeah, that would maybe. be tight. By all the right. way, if we if we move in together. I hope you don't mind the smell of coffee. Oh no, I love the smell of coffee. Okay. You're, you're gonna learn to like this, dude. I I like I like coffee. I just don't have enough time for like myself in the morning to make it. I get up and go to work. Oh, I'll make you coffee every day. Oh, that's cute. Team yeah, work. I will. <laughs> I'm trying to like. I'm trying to like. <gasps> Can learn you how to start like roasting my own are beans? Are you good at making iced coffee? Oh yeah, I'm in love with iced coffee. Oh yeah, dude. cold brew is so can, easy. If you can make me some cold brew. You're yeah, fucking bitch if you like iced coffee. Fuck you. Fuck, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but no, yeah, ice iced coffee is super simple. It's it's kind of like just like a tea bag. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sweet. Well, you've heard it here, folks. We got Sea Bass, Wolf, and Roach on the line. Thank you, Roach, dude, for tuning in with us tonight, dude. I'll let you know when this podcast hits the internet. Is there anything else you'd like to say? Um, make sure you go follow all our SoundClouds. We got, I'd say, four, but I don't know our producer SoundCloud by heart. Um, we got SoundCloud.com slash Bomb Squad Roach. We got SoundCloud.com slash Bomb Squad Tapes. And Quinn, what's yours? Uh, mine is just SoundCloud.com slash WolfXL. And then it should be our SoundCloud.com slash Black Delta Music for the other one. You think so? I think it's like Sistine Noct or something like that. That uh, might be. Uh, if you go gonna, on the gonna, Bomb Squad page, there's a link to his account, but definitely check him out. Yeah, you, uh, are you going to link all this too in the description? Yes, sir. All right, but. <laughs> yes, sir. I'm going to have all you guys text it to me. All right, thank you guys for listening in. This was another pleasant podcast. And uh, Mr. Roach, if you don't mind playing us some Danny Brown. Yeah, I'm going to. I can remember who I, Danny Brown I got to hang up with uh, Wolf to do that, but I'll do that. All right. See you later, Wolf. Bye-bye. See you, Wolf. <laughs>